So uh, first of all, sorry about the noise. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's the uh, air conditioning unit in the background. I had someone uh, ask me how I make wedges. Um, I haven't made a ton of wedges, but a really easy way to make wedges is with a bandsaw. Not the safest way, especially with all, little tiny off cuts like this. But uh, we're, we'll, we'll give it a try. You can see how goofy this is. Look how small this part is. But look, all that good material in there. So this is silver maple. It even has an inclusion, which I don't think that's a good idea for wedges. You really want a clear wedge. Otherwise, it, it could break. But you know what? Sometimes that's okay. So first of all, let's cut a little of this off because otherwise it won't fit with the camera. Uh... You know what, I won't hook up the, um, the shop vac, because it's too loud. Okay, so that's a little better. This is, now, silver maple's pretty damn boring. Uh, or maple. The maple that I get is pretty damn boring, and this silver maple is pretty damn boring, but I think this is part of a burl, actually. See a little bark inclusion. So usually what I do is I, I flatten one of the sides, just to make it easier, let's see which side am I gonna which side am I gonna go in on? Uh, let's go with this one. So that's that's good enough. I don't make this perfect. This is not perfect now. The important part of this is I tilt it. Now, let's see if I can make this a little better for you guys with the brightness. This uh, little, this little Ulanzi RBG thing is pretty cool actually. I've used this a lot to, for light because it has a magnet on it. Let's turn that brightness down a little more. There we go. Right? Right guys? Now. No, terrible. Uh, hopefully that's okay. So, uh, the most important part, let me clean this up one more time. So, the most important part is going in at an angle. Because that's what you want. You want an angled wedge. So let's see what we got here. So if I go this way, it'll come out it'll come out on this side. If I go this way, it'll come out on this side, okay? So I'm going to go this side cuz that's what I want. Now you can see it's really thin. I wouldn't use this wedge, but that's just a quick demonstration. It actually was kind of pretty, but it wouldn't be pretty on the end grain. It would be quite boring on the end grain, actually. Let's see if we can focus. Yeah. Not much going on there. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. All right, it doesn't want to focus. So now that I cut that part off, you could just cut this. To get this big wedge but that'll be pretty crappy so let's do it the other way sorry I don't know if you can hear me <laughs> let's I keep doing that I keep I keep going into the I keep turning the machines on before I finish what I'm saying so hopefully uh, I finish now let's go in the other way now oops this is this is how I want to go so I'm gonna go close to this edge because I want it to be thick So you might think uh, this is bad, I did a bad job, but watch this. Just like that. 
just like that we got a decent wedge this is for a hatchet this size I will use this because silver maple is really nice now look too thick right thin here god damn it <laughs> fucking I think I ruined this camera anyway too thick on this side so let's remedy that so here's my uh, little Ryobi uh, 4x36 belt sander you just sneak in here man I'm so hot I'm sweating anyway so how would I fix this let me show you it's actually funny how I do this it really is I use this right here because I've learned after so many times instead of pushing into this with my fingers and and taking my fingerprints off which is actually I actually really like taking my fingerprints off because if I want to commit a crime you know what I'm saying anyway <laughs> so this this side is really fat this side right here and this side is a lot skinnier so what we're gonna do is we're gonna push on this side and try to correct that now I do have to turn the shop back on for this so bear with me here I have a bunch of wedges right below this So uh, not done yet, but a lot better. Um, you can see this side is still real thin up top. Oh man. So you can see it's thin up top and thick over here on this side. So I still have to favor this side. And uh, at the top, it's a little bit, it's a little bit thicker to the side that's thicker on the, okay, you get what I'm saying. You can also see that this uh, little little um, wane, I think they call that wane when the bark uh, kind of takes off a part of the lumber. There's just missing lumber there. That makes it look so it's not a good wedge, but it's fine. It's I can get rid of that with a little bit of sanding, or I can even uh, cut it off right there. Cut it off right there. You get what I'm saying or sand it off or even when I round it I mean it, it's pretty long so this is whoops this is a lot longer than a normal hatchet size wedge so I, I have a lot of room to spare anyway you can see this side is almost perfect and uh, that's what you're looking for you could do you got guys you could do this with a rasp you could do this with a rasp you could do the cutting with a rip saw it's not that hard actually you just have to, for the rip saw part, you just have to have a decent kind of vise or some kind of way to hold it. So let's keep going. Let's keep trying to make this perfect.
almost forgot about the deafening sound of the shop bag. <laughs> so as you can see now, pretty even, not bad. This happens fast, guys. When you have a new belt on your belt sander, even a belt sander, you don't need a belt grinder for this. Even a belt sander works pretty fast with a new belt. This is actually a brand new belt. Uh, I'm pretty happy. I've been using an old belt for a long, long time. And when when it comes to wood, I want to talk to you about uh, guys about this. When it comes to wood, use your cheapest but roughest belt because those cheap belts don't last with metal, but they do last with wood. So. Uh, just a little tip there. Uh, you can see that that wane is still there a little bit. Tiny bit of wane. Nothing. Not a problem. Because, actually, you know what? I would want to. I would want to fix that. But that's that doesn't need to be shown on video. Just wanted to show you guys a little bit about the how I do this. I have made a bunch. Uh, let's see here. Did I? Ah, shit. They're not right here. Here's some uh, sassafras. Uh, this one's way too short. But how cool is sassafras, guys? How cool is that? Not the coolest end grain, though. And you can see this isn't even. <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to work. <laughs> how about this one? No, then we're gone. We're out of focus. Um, oh, here's a big old sassafras. A big old sassy. Look how thick that boy is. Woo! It's not uh, even, but look how much material I have left um, because of this little concavity here. You can even see how rough it is. Um, because I have so much material, easy fix with a belt sander. And you could even use a big rasp. Uh, I was going to show you guys, but it's kind of hard. Oh, by the way, I wanted to talk about this little thing. Another thing this helps with is those wedges get so hot. They get so hot. So having something to push up against it, it's pretty nice. Uh, it looks goofy. It seems goofy, but trust me, worth it. So uh, this is just sitting here. This is a little piece of pin oak, one of my original uh, billets, ha uh, hatchet handle billets, I guess you'd say, of uh, pin oak that I'm going to make a handle with eventually. Maybe I'll use this vintage handle as a template that has the broken uh, tongue. I think that'll look pretty, pretty cool. While I have you here, I should show you guys some cool stuff, shouldn't I? Uh, let's see, what do we got? What do we got? Well, this is a pitted axe that I just, uh, what did I do to this again? Oh, I just cleaned it up a little. I don't usually change the uh, pole, but why did I do this again? Oh, it was completely slanted to one side like that. So I straightened it up a little bit and uh, cleaned up the mushrooming. But look at the pitting on this axe. Ooh! This kind of pitting will... What will it do? Something. Good. This kind of pitting would take the rust off of a... <laughs> Such a... I, am, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I like bullshitting. I like saying things that mean nothing. <laughs> uh, do I have anything cool to show you guys? It's sitting right here. This is pretty cool. This is a C. Hammond. Might have shown you. I don't think I showed you guys this actually. Come on, why you do this? Come on, you making me. You making me sad. I guess I just don't, guys. I don't think I could show things close up anymore. My face is fine. Look at that. My face is fine. Now I put this up. Out of focus. <laughs> what the fuck? I can see the fucking, it's so sad, I can see the things going on with the camera lens. I, it was my fault, I dropped the camera. I, I really want to beat my ass for it. <laughs> but here's the number two, uh, C. Hammond. Isn't that a cool little piece? Here's a little Dunlap. It's, this is a really interesting break. I've never seen a crack. You can even see it without me going too close. I've never seen a crack that goes this way. And it's on both sides. So it's all the way through. This is a little Dunlap. I don't know if you guys can see that bad boy. Now, you know what? Let me bring it closer so you guys can't see it all for some reason. Oh, maybe i got to zoom out. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> anyway. So, uh... That's that. That's the, uh... Little demonstration. I've got a bunch of uh, wedges that way. 
here's a little uh here's the project i never finished <laughs> it's supposed to be like a kooksa type deal but I don't know where I was going with this. It cracked and I just kind of gave up on it, but then I kind of fixed it. I took the crack away and I, uh, well, I didn't finish it. So this is a, a American beach. I love carving with American beach. It's too bad that it's, it's so hard. Otherwise I'd use it for wedges. Um, here's an early hatchet handle that I made. That's really bad. Terrible. One of the worst. Wow. Really bad. It looks like it has decent taper, right? But no, it's just wrong. This this back is flat. I think what happened was this broke off or something. So it's just bad. Uh, here's another vintage template handle. My friend gave me this. It's a house axe handle. Can't wait to make a handle out of this one. As a, a, This is a template. Uh, I want to save this for something special maybe. Maybe I'll use it as a handle match. That's what they call it, by the way, guys, a handle match. When you put an existing handle on a different head, on an old vintage handle, on a different vintage head. So it's called a handle match. And that's something I really learned a lot from uh, Axe Yankee about. By the way, if you've noticed, I talk about Axe Yankee's kind of mentality all the time. I have learned so much from this guy. I hope he doesn't watch these videos and go, what the fuck? He's talking about all my secrets. <laughs> he, he pretty much told me I got to spread. I think he said spread the news about how to do things the way he thinks is right. I kind of agree with him. I want everybody to do things as, as best they can so we don't ruin, you know, vintage lumber, uh, beautiful vintage axes. It's a nice one, isn't it? Is that a nice one? Can't wait to hang that. Um, yeah, so I've made a lot of mistakes, and uh, it's pretty awesome to have guys like that help me out and tell me about their philosophy. And then I basically just steal their essence, like Dane Cook did with Louis C.K. On that note, <laughs> I don't think you guys, I don't know if you guys are dirty comedy fans, but I'm a dirty, dirty boy myself. This is me giving you the armpit of, of, uh, finality. Goodbye. <laughs>